Well, police say they have more boots on the ground in hotspot areas across South Africa. This follows the Constitutional Court ruling that may see former President Jacob Zuma return to jail after the court upheld that his release on medical parole was unlawful. In July 2021, the arrest of Zuma led to unrest and looting in KwaZulu-Natal and Gauteng. Meanwhile, despite authorities saying there is no evidence of any link, concerns remain that attacks on trucks that we've seen over the past week could escalate into similar unrest and the city press has reported on a leaked intelligence report suggesting that an organization of truckers sympathetic to the former president Zuma together with Operation Dudula were the key instigators of the violence. To discuss we're now joined by senior research fellow for African diplomacy and leadership at the University of Johannesburg Dr. Oscar van Heerden. We're also joined by the executive director of the African Center for Security and Intelligence Practice. David Africa. Uh, Mr. Africa, let me start with you. What do you think of this report uh, or this uh, leaked intelligence report suggesting the All Truck Drivers Forum and Allied SA, as well as Operation Dula, could be behind the violence? Hi, good afternoon, Francis. Um, the, the, I mean, the bits from the report that we glance from the news uh, article. Uh, it is, I mean, it's very difficult on the basis of that to, you know, to make an informed uh, judgment as to the, the, firstly, the credibility of the report and, and then, I mean, the correctness thereof. Obviously, as outsiders, we are, uh, I mean, we don't have access to, to the information that crime intelligence has, but I mean, the, the institution doesn't have, um, you know, it doesn't have a record of producing high-quality uh, intelligence in in recent in recent years. And I mean, just one of the things I picked up in reading the newspaper article was, uh, I mean, they talk about, you know, they allocate blame in a sense uh, to certain organisations, but then they also refer at the same time to random attacks. So once you apportion blame you can't claim these things to be random at the same time. So mm. the, I think the basic problem is that we we don't know how much credibility resides in this report. If the report is even, uh, I mean, if it's not a fake report, if there is actually a report as the newspaper suggests. Uh, Dr. Van Heerden, do you have the same concern? It, it certainly doesn't uh, tally up with what we heard from the police minister this week. And Becky Ele, we, we were live um, on him, and he said explicitly that most of the attacks uh, have been, uh, have rather not uh, been on foreign owned trucks or, or truck drivers. Whereas I understand this report suggesting now there, there may be some uh, concerns about foreigners once more. Yeah, I think, you know, Francis, I think two elements that I think it is important. The one is, it's true that the Truckers Association did somehow pledge allegiance to former President Zuma, but I think um, the media is blowing that out of proportion. I don't think these trucks are being targeted and, 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 and being burned because of the ruling of the Constitutional Court with regards to former President Zuma. I think these are disgruntled employees, uh, truckers, um, they are not getting the demands that they are demanding um, and this is a way of venting their anger and, and wanting to show that if we don't get what we want, then we are going to engage in these criminal activities. So that's the first thing. I think the second thing is that I do think there is a xenophobic element to this, unfortunately. Um, when we target certain industries, it seems that there is this argument that suggests that we must target foreigners, um, Africans in particular, uh, to say that they are taking our jobs and so forth. And the truth of the matter is, Francis, that we have a shortage of truckers. 3,000 truckers are being sought by industry to actually be able to drive our trucks. Um, so it's not true that foreigners are necessarily taking the jobs of locals. Uh, David Africa, um, Ailey also said uh, he gave some information that this could be linked to business. Uh, he suggested that one uh, specific industry using the trucks was being targeted. 
Then he also said it's a sophisticated operation that seeks to undermine the state. So again, we have a myriad of explanations of what is possibly going on. Um, like the doctor has just pointed out, there's a history of attacks on trucks anyway. So we need more information. Hopefully that will uh, emerge in court this week. Uh, the, the, you know, the reality is that uh, because of the, the, the political fragility in the country, the, the fact that uh, the authority of the state has been whittled away uh, over a period of years, and the state has not developed the capability to effectively establish its authority on the one hand. On the other hand, the, the, the absence of, you know, if you go back 15, 20, 25 years, you, you had a national project to build a democratic South Africa and people coalesced around it. Now, in the absence of that, what happens is that you, you have two sort of paradoxical developments. You have, on the one hand, a fracturing, so things splinter and everyone goes their own way. But at the same time, you have the merging of multiple interests to achieve the same objectives. So what we have in South Africa is that protest and, and violence almost always has an economic element to it. So there, there, are, there are people, business people who say, you know, if we effect violence, we will benefit from it. Then there are people with political interests who say, if we create instability, you know, well, it, it elevates our voice. People have to listen to us. Uh, and others are interested in destabilizing the state. And then there are people who are just disgruntled, as Oscar said. You know, they, they are employees or people who seek employment, uh, who's venting the anger, uh, you know, in this case, uh, against trucks. So you do have an intersection of many elements. And, and I mean, one would expect that, that uh, crime intelligence, for instance, in this case, would, would not come and say that there are business interests and, you know, there are this interest, and, but to explain to the society, because obviously we are interested in knowing who is doing this. What are the relationships that, that, that exist? I mean, how does this relationship between different interests play out in respect of the burning of trucks. Yeah, it, exactly. All right, we've almost run out of time, but uh, doctor, let me give you the, the last word. So in light of what Mr. Africa has said, a confluence of uh, different motives coming together, but what about the state's response? I mean, we had a, an interministerial committee set up in 2020. Nothing seems to have changed since then. We now have the SANDF involved, and we do have arrests, um, but some would say that the SANDF involvement suggests again uh, a lack of, of intelligence to prevent, uh, to give police the, the tools that they need to stop these attacks before they begin. Yeah, look, I mean, I think, Francis, that the, the, the key message here, and I agree with uh, uh, David Africa, that we need to be proactive and not reactive. Far too often the N3, the corridor to, to, to Durban, et cetera, is disrupted. Uh, people have cotton on that this can do serious economic harm, um, whether it is trucks, whether it is just blocking any goods and services that is going to our ports. And I think government needs to wake up and stop being reactive. Uh, I think our intelligence services, prime intelligence, et cetera, needs to be much more proactive in predicting and understanding who are these syndicates, who are these organized crime syndicates, etc., to destabilize, because these are saboteurs. They are not only destabilizing and, and burning of trucks, but it's goods and services and ultimately trade that is being affected. And they know this. And so if we don't come up with mechanisms of dealing with it effectively as government and stop being reactive, I fear we're going to see much more of these kinds of things. Yeah, I mean, what you point out, even food prices possibly going up uh, even further, and that affects the poor, and, and food has to be transported on, on road in this country. All right, we have to leave it there, but thank you for your insights. Uh, both of you, Dr. Oscar van Heerden, Senior Research Fellow for African Diplomacy and Leadership at UJ, David Africa, Executive Director of the African Center for Security and Intelligence Praxis.